back, friends and neighbors. Dr. Ken Berry here with you uh, for a perhaps quite controversial live question and answer. Uh, I'm going to be specifically requesting questions from our vegan brothers and sisters, whole food plant based brothers and sisters, uh, because I feel like going vegan is the first step towards discovering a proper human diet. And so I definitely want to answer questions from you about the carnivore diet, about the keto diet, ketovore diet, low carb diet, uh, proper human diet. But I also know that there are plant based believers out there who uh, want more information. They're like, uh, you know, they're like, this Dr. Barry can't be this crazy. I mean, everybody knows meat is bad for you. So what's he talking about? So please, if you know anybody who believes in the health benefits of a plant-based diet, send them a link to this video because I would love to answer their questions as well. I'm going to be hanging out for the next hour or so, maybe not as not an hour, maybe more than an hour, depending on how many questions we're getting. Um, there's no telling what will be said in this video. Uh, I try to limit my comments so that I don't get in trouble with the provider, uh, the, the platform that I'm currently on, but uh, there are truths that need to be told and I'm becoming progressively tired of not addressing uh, these truths. So let's do some questions. Um, Mariana says, do you believe, do you agree with taking digestive enzymes? It depends. If you've had chronic recurrent bouts of pancreatitis, then you absolutely need to take prescription strength digestive enzymes. Uh, some people who are very elderly might benefit from digestive enzymes. Uh, but the the over the counter, the, the, the digestive enzymes that you buy from websites and from Instagram channels and YouTube, that's foolishness. If you think you need digestive enzymes, then you need to get the real deal. You need to get go to your doctor. And uh, if they want to do some testing to see if you're still making plenty of digestive enzymes, they can do that. Uh, but there, there are 20 different prescription strengths and formulations of digestive enzymes. Uh, buying stuff online, first of all, you've got no guarantee that it actually contains any digestive enzymes. So if you think you need that, you need to see your doctor and get the real thing. Oh, there's Glim Glimpty from uh, Copenhagen. Denmark. I love it. I can't wait to come to Denmark and say hi to you in person, Glimty. Uh, here's Mika from Melbourne, Australia. Hello, Mika. I can't wait to come to Melbourne and say hi to you. Uh, everybody, tell me where you're watching from in the comments. What city, what state, what country? Where are you at right now? Courtney says, how much weight could I lose in one month on carnivore? Well, Courtney, it depends on how much overweight you are right now. Nisha and I have seen multiple people lose 20 pounds of fat in one month on a carnivore diet, but these were people who were severely obese. And so if, it depends. If you've got 10 or 20 pounds you want to lose before a wedding or a party, it's going to take a while. The last 10 to 20 pounds are always the hardest always take the longest. Uh, but if you're 250 pounds overweight, you could easily lose uh, 15 or 20 pounds of fluid in the first month, but also 15 to 20 pounds of fat in the first month as well. Uh, Floyd says, what are we brushing our teeth with? So I use a non, uh, a toothpaste that has no fluoride added. Because on a, uh, a proper human diet, you're getting plenty of vitamin D3, plenty of vitamin K2. Uh, you're getting all the minerals, especially if you're using the daily mineral drops. There's a link in the show notes if you want to check those out. But you don't need any fluoride in your toothpaste if that's the case. You definitely don't need ever need any fluoride in your drinking water. So, yeah, I told you we're going to get controversial. Um, I also use a toothpaste that has... Um, micro hydroxyapatite 
because there's some research that seems to show that that can protect and, and actually renew enamel. And uh, we've had many people on this way of eating report that they would have a very early cavity that the dentist wanted to fill. And they would say, you know, let's check it again in six months. And when they went back in six months, that cavity was gone. It had been remineralized. We've heard this hundreds of times. Now, if you've got a cavity that's all the way down to the, the nerve cavity, you're going to have to get that fixed. But if it's an early cavity that, that's a partial thickness through the enamel, uh, I'd put off, I'd put, I'd put off getting that filled for a few months and see if you can't reverse that. Chawa, daily vitamins with folate, yay or nay. So if you mean a multivitamin that you bought at Walmart or, or Costco or Kroger's, uh, they're all, virtually all of them are a complete and utter waste of money. Many of the vitamins are not even the real actual vitamin. They're a synthetic pseudo vitamin. And many of the minerals are formulated in such a way that it's very hard for your body to absorb them. So uh, if you're eating a standard American diet or a, a predominantly plant-based diet, then you probably need to take a good quality multivitamin, multimineral. But if you're eating a proper human diet, there's you don't need to take all of those. You're getting most of those in your diet. Here's a question from Gary. Is a DEXA scan a good option to measure visceral fat? Yes, it is. If you tell the, the, the operator, the machine operator on the day you go, say, hey, I want to check my visceral fat as well, not just my bone density. Because many times they're, they're doing the DEXA scan just to check your bone density. But if they click a few extra buttons, they can actually check your bone density, but also they can check visceral fat and other things as well. Hashtag on passive. Marty, I lost 30 pounds in 30 days on carnivore. And crazy thing is, used to get gout before carnivore. Now I never get gout. So there's so many people out there, Marty, who still believe that eating red meat and seafood is what gives you gout. And that's just not true. That's not the way human physiology works. So I'm glad you figured that out. Tux. Hey, Dr. Barry, how, how would you recommend putting on weight as a naturally skinny guy on carnivore? Should I be looking for calories or try a different approach? So first and foremost, Tux, you just like everybody else on carnivore, you need to eat till you're comfortably stuffed. OK, if you're trying to put on weight, I'm assuming you mean you're trying to put on muscle and connective tissue and bone strength. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Uh, in order to do that, I wouldn't eat one meal a day. I would eat two or three carnivore meals a day if I was trying to put on extra muscle. Uh, and then you've got to lift heavy things. You have to, you have to lift weights and you have to do it properly and you can't overtrain and you'll be able to gain as effectively as much muscle and bone strength as you want. It'll take time, of course. Uh, just like any good thing does. Now, if you're wanting to, to, to put on fat, then just add some carbohydrates to your carnivore diet and eat, eat three or four meals a day and you'll gain some fat. But I doubt that's what you mean. Uh, Tamars, thank you very much for the super chat. Carla said, I started uh, keto two months ago. Have lost weight and feel great. Shoulders stop hurting. Skin is better. So, Carla, are you surprised that all these good things came from eating a proper human diet? Because many people think that when Carla, people like Carla say things like this, they're like, there's no way, that's placebo. A diet can't do that many good things. Well, if you think about this properly, the old way you were eating, Carla, was full of slow poisons and inflammatory, high carbohydrate, sugar spiking junk. Now the diet that you're eating is full of vitamins and minerals, amino acids, fatty acids. It's very uninflammatory. It's ancestrally appropriate. It keeps you full for a very long time, so you're not wanting to snack all the time. When you look at it like that, you're like, well, yeah, if you had vitamin and mineral deficiencies and you had chronic inflammation from eating the junk and you had chronic blood sugar spikes and insulin spikes from eating the junk, and then you stopped eating the junk and started eating the good nutrient-dense food, I guess it could do multiple good things for your body, not just weight loss. Hey, there's Carnivore Mommy.
Here's a question from Burl. Does borax help if you have arthritis? Um, I don't recommend borax. Uh, yeah, a lot of people brush their teeth with uh, hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. Uh, I've been told by some smart dentists who should know that baking soda is a little too abrasive because you don't want to. There's no reason if you're eating a proper human diet to scrub your teeth with something abrasive. And then the hydrogen peroxide will clean your teeth, but it will also kill millions of beneficial oral bacteria. And yes, I said beneficial. Did you know that when, when you're eating a proper human diet, your mouth is actually colonized by bacteria that are good for you. They actually make nitric oxide, which helps keep your blood pressure lower. And it's good for you in hundreds of other ways. And so you don't want to kill all your bacteria in your mouth. You just want to, you want to, what I do is I use a water pick once a day, right before bedtime. So that if there's any meat lodged in my teeth, I get that out. And then obviously during the day, if I've got a huge hunk of meat stuck in my teeth, I, I have, I use, I don't, I never floss my teeth ever. I use this little guy. You've seen these to get the meat out. And then I, I just throw it back in the drawer. Oh, that's, they're my, that's dirty, right? That's not, I, I, yeah. Uh, I, my oral microbiome is so strong. My stomach acids is so strong that if by throwing this in the drawer and using it over and over, I've yet to develop any infection from that. Okay, this is kind of an ancestral way that people used to live. What we used to do if we had meat stuck in our teeth was break off a limb from a tree that was covered in bacteria and probably ants and aphids and probably owl shit too, and then use that stick to clean our teeth. And we, that was fine. No big deal. So I don't recommend using anything that's going to kill your oral microbiome like hydrogen peroxide or Listerine or any of that kind of stuff. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's good for you. Uh, it's going to cause problems over the long term. And you also don't want to use something very abrasive to scrub on your teeth really hard. Ah, oh, Christian, heavy cream and coffee and cheese causing my stall. Maybe, maybe. Um, the, a very unpopular opinion in the uh, low-carb keto, ketovore carnivore community is that dr drinking milk or eating dairy as an adult is not ancestrally appropriate. We've only been doing that for about eight or 9,000 years. Uh, that has not enough time for us to have adapted to the inflammatory proteins. And uh, currently, uh, almost 75% of adult humans on the planet are intolerant to lactose. And that's not a bug, that's a feature. We're supposed to drink milk when we're babies. And about the age four, five, six, somewhere in there, years of age, we're supposed to stop drinking milk. And uh, this is what every human on the planet has, has done before we started uh, having domesticated animals. We never drank milk our entire adult life. And so the, the, the macronutrient count for heavy cream is pretty decent. And for full fat cheese, full fat, fully fermented cheese, the macro count, the, the protein, the fat, and the carbs, it's, it's, it's decent. But you've got to understand that three quarters of adults on the planet cannot tolerate lactose. And then I would guess that about 50% of adults on the planet are going to have at least some degree of inflammation from the casein and the whey in dairy. Uh now, also, there's casomorphones, kind of rhymes with morphine. This is what makes, for many people, not everybody, but some people are addicted to dairy. And when you're a little baby, you, we want you to be addicted to your mother's breast milk because that's, that, that's going to ensure that you're going to want it and seek it out, and you're going to suck, and you're going to fill your belly with that nutritious mother's milk. But as an adult, casomorphines, don't serve you well. What winds up happening is they allow you to eat too much cheese too often, or uh, uh, Christian, it allows you to do what I used to do when I first started keto was I would put a little bit of coffee in my heavy cream because I freaking love all things cream, dairy, cheese, ricotta, uh, Neufchatel, uh, all of it, all dairy. I love it except for skim milk. That's the Satan's ball sweat. I don't want skim milk, but if it's, if it's whole milk or fattier than that, I love it. I'm addicted to it. 
but I know that if I start to drink um, whole milk, half and half, heavy cream too too much too often, I'll start to gain weight. And especially if I were like drinking a gallon, and this this all everything I'm saying applies to raw milk too, guys. Another unpopular opinion in the regenerative farming community, I, who I consider myself to be a part of. I'm sorry, but that's that that that's great. If you've got a, a baby and the and the mother can't produce milk, or you've lost the mother and the and the baby needs milk, raw goat's milk, booyah, hundred percent, yes. But when that child gets to be five, six, seven years of age, you need to wean it down and stop it because it's not ancestrally appropriate. I think raw milk, if properly handled, is the least bad of all the liquid dairy options. Le least bad does not make it good does not make it optimal. Just keep that in mind. So yeah, if your weight loss has been stalled for over three months, Christian, then you probably ought to try a month or two of no dairy. Uh, good question from Tim. Is too much autophagy good or bad for your body? Yeah. So too much autophagy, Tim, and you would literally cease to exist. You're, you would eat up everything. And so uh, you want to stimulate autophagy through exercise, through eating a ketogenic diet, uh, through doing some, at least some degree of intermittent fasting. But you don't want autophagy, autophagy to be out of control. That also is not a good thing. You don't want too much autophagy. Now, most people don't have too much. It's very rare, but it can happen. But you don't want that either. Good question. Gabrielle, 45 days carnivore, 15 kilograms lost, but my uric acid is 12. So don't worry about your uric acid while you're healing right now, Gabrielle. I guarantee you, you have not had a gout attack. You're in no danger of having a gout attack. This is a temporary thing as your body adjusts to this new way of eating. Okay. Keep losing the weight and you'll notice your uric acid's coming back down to normal. To Mars, carnivore for the last two years. However, pooping happens every five days, sometimes even every seven. Is that normal or should I check it? So the official recommendation from the American Gastroenterological Association is that you should poop somewhere between three times a day and once every third day. That's considered the normal range. But keep in mind that normal range was set based on people eating lots of fiber and carbohydrates, effectively a plant-based diet, because that's what the average American eats. Now, when you're eating purely a carnivore diet, this freaks a lot of people out. They're like, oh, pooping every fifth day, that cannot be healthy. All that meat's just sitting there rotting in your colon. No, no, no. What happens is meat is pure nutrition. There's no garbage that you have to poop out. You absorb every bit of the meat. So for a carnivore like tomorrow, all they're pooping out is dead bacteria that die by the billions every day in your large intestine and dead epithelial cells that have sloughed off somewhere along the gastrointestinal tract. There's, there's no waste in a carnivore diet, very, very little waste. And so that's all you're pooping out tomorrow. So every fifth day is completely and totally fine. Uh, every seventh day is probably fine if you're not having any abdominal pain at all. You're not having any abdominal bloating. You're not having any gas or weird discomfort. You're not having any bleeding or, or straining when you do have a bowel movement. Uh, you don't feel like there's something hung in your abdomen, like I feel like I can't get it all out. If you're having any of those symptoms, then you need to go see your doctor ASAP. But if you're like, no, dude, my belly's never been happier. I feel perfectly normal and fine and happy, but I just poop every fifth day. Nothing to worry about. Great question. Al in Scotland, as a survivor of a Widowmaker and now a proper human diet carnivore, what advice are a cold water swimming hot tub uh, use? My ejection fraction is now up to 49%. Booyah, Al. Very good. So there is some research that shows that the hormesis uh, given by cold water plunges and by sauna use probably is hormetic in that it is stress on your body, but it's probably a beneficial good stress. Probably probably leads to improvements. Just like when you lift weights really hard, that's a stress on your muscles and your bones, but then it makes your muscles and bones stronger. Kind of that same concept. And so I think, I think it's fine to do cold plunges and to do uh, sauna. The way I do sauna here in Tennessee 
or nine months out of the year is on a, a hot sunny day. I just go out in my shorts and nothing else. And I get in the back seat of my black Dodge pickup truck and close the doors with all the windows up. It's about 160 degrees in there. And I can stay five or 10 minutes and I am, I literally sweat probably a quart. Another great way to do it if you live in a place where it gets above 70 during the day is to go up in the attic, especially if you have a black roof. It'll easily get 100, 120, 140 degrees up there. So if you don't want to pay money to go to a sauna or pay money to have a sauna installed in your house, you can use a redneck sauna like I do. Get in the back seat of your black pickup truck with the windows up. And then cold plunge. We have a couple of farms here on the on the a couple of ponds here on the farm. And uh, a lot of times in the winter, I'll, I'll go jump in a pond. Uh, we used to have a swimming pool at the old farm. And I would jump in it when it was 40, 50 degrees or even colder. Uh, but as far as paying to go do a cold plunge, I'm probably not going to do that. But I do think there are probably some benefits. Do I think it's a very important major benefit? No, I think it's a 1% or 2% benefit. 85% of the benefit for your health coming from eating a proper human diet. Joanna, how long can I expect to see bone density test improve on carnivore? Keto five months and carnivore 90 days with reversal of IBS that I've had for 43 years. Huzzah. So bones do get stronger. They can get stronger. And with when you get your hormones balanced and you're eating a proper human diet, you need to recheck your, your BMD, bone mineral density, which is checked with a DEXA scan, D-E-X-A. I would do that every 12 months so that you can follow and see what your bone density is doing. Now, keep in mind, a DEXA scan checks bone density, not bone strength. And what many people have told me is that I've been eating proper human diet for two or three years now. And when I go get my DEXA scan checked, it's a little better or it's the same as last year. It's like it, the density is not really changing. But the other day I stepped off the curb and I fell onto the pavement on my outstretched hand. This is like a 67 year old woman. I twisted my ankle, fell off the curb and landed on my hand like this and didn't break anything. Now, how many of you guys know a, a woman in her 60s, 70s or 80s that when she when she twisted her ankle, she broke her ankle. And when she fell on her outstretched hand, she broke her wrist. Or she broke her hip in the fall too. Very, very common. So when, when 60 and 70 something year old women start saying, dude, I just fell on the pavement, didn't break anything. Or I tripped and fell down the stairs, did not break a thing. That's bone strength. That's what you're actually going for. You're not really going for bone density. Now, bone density is a semi-good proxy marker of bone strength, unless you're taking something like Fosamax or Boniva or Actinel that, that pharmaceutically increase your bone density because they have never been shown to increase bone strength, but they have been shown to increase, increase bone density. Those are two different things. So check it every 12 months, Joanna. You guys got some good questions today. Rachel, proximal myopathy. Can this reverse or stop getting worse on a proper human diet? So, so many myopathies and neuropathies are what you're going to notice when you start a proper human diet and stick to it strictly is that they get the, the progression slows down and the symptoms are less severe and you have flare ups less frequently. That's what you're going to notice. And uh, some people have, have reported 95% improvement. Some people just a 70% improvement in the decrease in symptoms. And I just don't have flare-ups as often as I used to. And it seems like the progression is slowing down. That's a great victory, Rachel. Nobody's saying that eating a proper human diet is going to cure these things. I'm just saying it's going to decrease the severity, decrease the frequency of flare-ups. TJ, strict carnivore for greater than a year, had COVID two weeks ago and now zero appetite and craving carbs. Yep. Never had cravings for a year. What gives? So any kind of infection like this with any virus, even a bacteria, is uh, can absolutely kill your appetite. And then you can have the old carbohydrate cravings. The carbohydrate monkey that used to sit on your back and tell you to eat carbs, he can come back temporarily. This is just temporary. It's not going to be long term. 
Any infection can do this to you. Danica, my 90-year-old mother has dementia and congestive heart failure. Should we put her on keto or carnivore? Or should we just say she has had a good run and leave it be? So this is a great question, but also this is a, I can feel the compassion in this question. Danica loves her mother. So here's how I would, if, if Danica, if I were your brother, and so therefore that was also my mother, this is how, what I would tell you. Is mom interested in the benefits? that keto or carnivore could bring her? Has she been talking about it? Is she wanting to try it? Uh, or when you brought it up, she's like, nah, I don't want to fool with that. I like to eat what I like to eat. Okay. That's going to be your decision tree, Danica. If your mom's like, yes, I've heard about this. I've, I saw one of Dr. Barry's videos. I absolutely, I would love to give it a try. 100% help her. 100% help her. Because 90 uh, I predict that as more and more people adopt a proper human diet over the coming decades, uh, being 90 is going gonna, is gonna to become not that big a deal. There's going to be lots of people who are 90, 95, 97. Uh, because when you eat a proper human diet, there are just less, less things that are going to kill you. Your odds of having a heart attack or a stroke or kidney failure or any of those things are going to go way, way down. Your risk of heart failure is going to go way down. So you're going to live longer. And so I don't think 90s done. I don't think you should hang up your, your spurs at 90. I don't know if your mom's a cowboy or not. She may not have any spurs, but, and so, but on the other hand, Danica, if your mom's like, eh, I don't want to fool with that. I'm old and tired. I just want to eat what I want to eat. That's exactly what you should do. As you can say, okay, mom, you've lived 90 years. You've got this big family that loves you. We all love you very much. You eat what you want to eat. Yeah, and 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 just be be prepared to love mama until you lose mama. But you can't make somebody, you can't make an adult eat a diet that they they don't believe in that they don't want to truly want to try. Because if you upset mom arguing with her about keto or carnivore, that's not going to help anything. It's going to strain the relationship could lead to family problems. You don't want any of that. But if mom, if mom's on board, huzzah, 100%. Let us know how it goes. Million-dollar day trader. Lost 39 pounds in six, re six weeks after reading Lies My Doctor Told Me. And if you don't know, Lies My Doctor Told Me is a book I wrote a few years back. There's a link in the show notes if you want to check it out. Um, just reading the book won't make you lose 39 pounds in six weeks. You actually have to implement a few of the simple trip tricks and tips that I talk about in the book and also on this YouTube this YouTube channel. Uh, huzzah, million dollar day trader. I bet your mind is much more keen now to make those trades, isn't it? Thank you, Kingdom Maker. Sonia just had a CT scan with contrast waiting for results. Will carnivore help pancreatitis and will carnivore help one large gallstone get smaller? Uh, if you've been suffering from recurrent bouts of chronic pancreatitis, absolutely. Carnivore is going to help you have fewer flare-ups because you're decreasing all of the fructose and other sugars that your pancreas has been having to deal with and your liver has been having to deal with. You're decreasing all of the, the junk that's in highly processed car carbohydrates and plant foods that your pancreas is having to deal with. Also, you're, you're not ingesting all of the non-nutritive amino acids that come from eating lots of, lots of grains and plant foods. There are lots of non-nutritive amino acids in grains and plant foods that a lot of people have never heard of a non-nutritive amino acid. And so, yeah, your pancreas is just going to have an easier time digesting the food. Also, if you're carnivore, you're going to be doing more intermittent fasting naturally. You're going to be eating one or two meals a day instead of three meals a day with snacks in between. That gives your pancreas time to rest. And also, if you've watched my, my new video on this channel about pancreas cancer, by eating a very low-carb diet and having an intermittent fasting window in your day each day, you're not going to be hyperinsulinemic, which is one of the leading risk factors for developing pancreatic cancer. And then the gallstone, we've had hundreds of people on meat heavy keto, on ketovore or carnivore all reach out and say, hey, I, I used to have this huge gallstone 
that they saw on ultrasound or CAT scan. And I went back and had the repeat scan and it's either gone or it's 80% smaller. We hear that all the time. Thank you, Donna, very much. Sergeant Carnivore, thanks for all you do, Doc. Three weeks Carnivore down 15 pounds. Finally decided to stop poking my fingers, checking numbers. I figure as long as I feel well, everything is okay. And I agree, if, if you're going to be uh, ketivore or carnivore, I don't think you need to have to track anything. Uh, if, you're, if you're a type 1 diabetic, then obviously you still got to check the blood sugars. But if you're a type 2 diabetic and it's reversing and resolving, I still want you to check an A1C every three months in that case. But you don't have to check your blood sugar, prick your finger five times a day anymore because you're eating ketovore, carnivore. You're not going to have blood sugar spikes. It's just not going to happen. So why waste the money on a strip? Right? Why check your ketones within your urine with a strip that costs money or check it with a ketone meter in your blood that costs money, lots of money, or in your breath by blowing in it, that costs a lot of money. Why would you do that if you're if you're eating less than 10 total grams a day of carbohydrates on ketovore or as close to zero carb as you can get on carnivore? Dude, you're going to be in ketosis most of the day. You don't have to waste money checking that stuff. Yeah. But if you're a data geek and you want to check, or if your doctor wants to check, I think it's fine to strengthen that relationship and say, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I know it's going to be fine, but we can check it. Yeah, no worries. Melissa T, does too much protein turn to glucose? Not in the way that some influencers out there on the on YouTube and other uh, websites will have you believe. I've actually discussed this with Professor Ben Bickman, who's he's a PhD researcher in Utah, and his entire job is, is to research human insulin metabolism and glucagon metabolism. Like he, That's all he studies, all he researches. He reads every paper that comes out about it. What he says is, if you're eating a low-carb diet, 20, 30 total grams of carbs a day or less, not net grams, but total grams, that there no meaningful amount of gluconeogenesis is going to come because you ate too much protein. Most adults, especially most adult women in the United States, are not eating enough protein. <clears throat> You're not going to spike your blood sugar because you ate a few grams, uh, too many, too many grams of beef. Okay, or bacon or eggs. It just doesn't work that way. Good question, Joe. Hey, Dr. Barry, you have said the optimal amount of carbs to consume on a, on a proper human diet. And so the proper human diet is a spectrum. It's not one diet for everybody. Some people who are young and healthy and very athletic, they can eat 100 total grams of carbs a day or less. Uh, does that type of carbs you consume matter? Yes. You still want it to be low, uh, low inflammatory, low carbohydrate veg. You want it to be... Uh, if you want to eat nuts, they need to have been sprouted or they need to have been soaked or they need to have been roasted or some combination so that you lower the lectin and the phytate and the oxalate count. If you're going to eat berry uh, fruit, you, you want to count your carbs and keep it under 100 total grams of carbs a day. Uh, I agree with Dr. Paul Saladino. Fruits are the one part of the plant that the plant doesn't mind if you eat. Okay, don't eat the seeds. But I think it's fine if you're this young, healthy, very athletic person that's working out for hours a day, you can eat 100 total grams and you can include some fruit and berries and low carb, low inflammation nuts, low carb veg. I think it's fine. Some of us, most of us need to come down to about 50 total grams. So that's the middle. Some of us have to go down to ketogenic, which is 20 total grams. Some have to go to 10 total grams, which is ketovore. Some folks like me who fatten and develop prediabetes very easily have to be as close to zero grams of carbs as possible. That's why there's a spectrum. So when you're young and healthy and go getter and you're exercising, you can, you can, you got more liberty. You can eat 100 total grams a day. But as you get older or as you get fatter or as you get more metabolically sicker, you need to cut the carbs back and keep cutting them until you get the benefits you're looking for. I actually do have a list of PhD uh, proper human diet approved carb sources uh, down in the show notes uh, that you can get a free copy of the proper human diet guidebook. There's a link in the show notes. Click on that. 
and uh, fill out the little form and I'll email you a free copy of the Proper Human Diet Guidebook, which has all the, the keto and ketovore friendly um, carbs that, that I think are not very inflammatory that shouldn't give you too much trouble. Yep. Nina, my rheumatoid arthritis not affected positively. Marker has increased since April. No pains, but I want to eradicate it. So you're not having any symptoms of your RA, but your marker went up. Now think about this, Nina. I don't really care what your marker is. I care that are you having symptoms or not? Are you doing damage? Because just having a high marker doesn't mean you're doing any damage. If you're doing damage to your joints, you'll know it because they'll be swollen and red and painful. And so if you're like, no, oh, my joints are fine, but my RA marker went up, doesn't matter. Is it, is it possible with this diet? So what's possible from eating a proper human diet is having a vast reduction in your RA symptoms, having very rare flare-ups of your RA, and having a much slower progression of the damage done to the joints by rheumatoid arthritis your markers will go up and down. If you recheck that marker in a month, it'll probably be down. It's going to do this. That That's that's nothing to be worried about. What you want to go by is your symptoms. Uh, Alan Scotland again, a friend is at her wits end with Crohn's about to send uh, your vlogs and Dr. Chafee. Perfect. That's exactly what she needs to know. She doesn't have a gallbladder and gets diarrhea eating fat. Any recommendations to add along with carnivore? So for, for the first month or two, Al, she may need to take an ox bile supplement to help her since she doesn't have the bile storage capacity she once had because she had her bile storage container taken out, her gallbladder. Uh, but most people only need the ox bile supplement for a month or two or three, and then they can just wean it down and not need it anymore. I think that's what she'll notice as well. Trish, 13-year-old grandson, just diagnosed with Tourette's. Can carnivore help slow, uh, stop or slow progression? So every neurological condition that has been tested so far, just did an uh, interview on this YouTube channel with uh, a neurologist who's done a randomized control trial and a random uh, randomized crossover trial in Parkinson's disease and in Alzheimer's. Showed benefit with, with uh, a keto diet. And carnivore is a subset of a ketogenic diet. Uh, we've had hundreds, thousands of people at this point whose depression got better, whose anxiety got better, whose OCD got better, whose anorexia nervosa got better, whose bulimia got better. Uh, yeah, Tourette's is going to it's going to get less severe. Also, keep in mind that 13 year old boys are susceptible to forming habits. And just because your 13-year-old has a repetitive body tick doesn't necessarily mean that they he has clinical Tourette syndrome. Some primary care doctors get a little bit froggy diagnosing Tourette's. When I was a young boy playing um, baseball, there was a, a, another boy on my baseball team. He had really long, beautiful, like beach boy hair, and he would he would do this all the time right? You know, to throw his hair. And he was really cool. And I thought he was really cool. And so I started doing this, even though I had my bushy hair that didn't really move when I shook my head. And I did it so often for so many weeks that it turned into a tick. And for months, I would be on the, on the, out in right field, because that's where I played. And I, I eventually got moved to first base, but I used to play right field. I'd be out there doing this, and, you know, I had my hat on. You could see that. And Granny Berry was about to have a conniption fit. That's who raised me. And she's like, you got to stop that. you got to stop that. I'm going to take you to the doctor. And so I'm sure that if I, if she had taken me to a child pediatrician or somebody, it's very likely I would have got diagnosed with Tourette's. But it, I didn't have Tourette's. I just had formed a habit. Some kids are much more apt to be habit formers than other kids. I also bit my fingernails, used to bite my toenails when I could reach them because I had a little bit of trauma and drama early in my life. And so I've just, I've always been, it's very easy for me to form a, a habit that I wish I hadn't formed. So hold out a little hope that this is just a habit, not actually Tourette's because I don't know what all your grandson's doing, but if it is Tourette's, carnivore, absolutely. Ketivore, carnivore is the way to go. Kingdom. 
Kingdom Seeker, got it. Uh, male, 62 years old, on 150 mics of levothyroxine. That's a thyroid, it's a fake thyroid replacement hormone for, for low thyroid. I want to take desiccated uh, beef thyroid extract. Any concerns or tips? Yeah, there's not an FDA approved uh, desiccated beef thyroid, but there is a uh, FDA approved desiccated pork or porcine thyroid. It's called Armor or Nature. Also WP or NP. And then in Canada, there's a brand called Urfa, E-R-F-A. Um, the problem with the beef thyroid extract is it's not consistent. Uh, you have to do a lot of steps in order to make um, thyroid extract a consistent dosage. There's a lot of math involved. You can't just grind up thyroids and put it in capsules and say, oh, there you go. One dose you might might have, it was mostly connective tissue and it has virtually no T3 in it at all. The next dose may have, have no connective tissue, all actual thyrocytes, and it's just way too high of a dose of T3 and T4. So I don't recommend the beef thyroid extract. You need you need a, a an FDA approved monitored uh, if you truly have hypothyroidism, and there's also a conversion chart to convert you from levothyroxine, which is the generic for synthroid. So if you want to switch from synthroid or levothyroxine over to a desiccated natural thyroid replacement hormone, there's a there's a chart online you can look up a conversion chart. Because what happens many times is doctors are not comfortable prescribing desiccated thyroid. And so you're on 150 mics now. There's a known dosage. They should switch you immediately to that dosage. But a lot of times they'll be like, well, I'm going to put you on 30 or 60 of armor, which is not nearly enough. But you don't know that you don't know the conversion unless you've looked it up. So if your doctor tries to pull that, because then what happens is you're like, no, I feel worse on armor. Well, it's because you were taking 75% uh, too low of a dose. You weren't even on the right dose of armor. That's why you felt worse, not because it didn't work. So make sure your doctor switches you to the appropriate strength of armor when you do make that, that change. Dinger, multiple sclerosis and Lyme disease, ketovore to carnivore over the last 18 months. Labs are perfect except for CRP, which is high. What else can I do for MS and Lyme? So you've got your diet sorted. Uh, clean keto, ketovore or carnivore. Any of those I think are perfect for MS and for Lyme. You want to be higher fats than you might normally be because of the MS. Uh, then you're going to, you've got your diet sorted. Okay. Now you're going to get your sleep sorted. Then are you going to make sure that you're sleeping enough for you in a very protected environment where your sleep is not interrupted. Then you're going to get your activity sorted. You're going to start lifting heavy things. You're going to start doing a little jogging. Maybe you might even, after you've jogged for a while, you're going to start doing a few, uh, 40 meter sprints, 50 meter sprints, that sort of thing. The healthier your body and your brain are, the the less the MS is going to be able to affect you and the Lyme as well. Tanya, being, been on carnivore for a year. I'm having minimal uh, change disease with kidneys. Doctors want me to quit. What, do you, what is your advice? So there's nothing about a carnivore diet or a ketogenic diet that is bad for your kidneys in any way. Eating meat is good for your kidneys. I've got several videos on this channel about kidney health. Just recently posted one about polycystic kidney disease. I've got another about chronic kidney disease. They invariably get better on a low carb diet, which is going to be have fewer, no grains and have more meat than if you were eating a high carb diet. So there's nothing about a carnivore diet that's going to harm your kidneys. All right, guys, now's the time. If you've got questions, type them in the comments. Let me get down here and see if we've got any more questions. New comments. Okay. Uh, your thoughts on peptides. I'm assuming you mean uh, like branch chain amino acids, uh, or do you mean the peptides that, although you don't really need, they're not FDA approved, you've got to get a doctor to order them for you. Uh, I've, I've experimented with a lot of those. I'm wholly unimpressed with them. Um, but some people swear by them, if that's the kind of peptides you're talking about.
Stephen, I have seborrheic dermatitis. Should I drink kefir for probiotics or is it better to just do the line diet? I, I would start with the line diet. Stephen, you don't need any dairy in your diet at all. Uh, seborrheic dermatitis, in many cases, dairy makes it worse. Uh, kefir, since the protein in the kefir, uh, the protein molecules have been acted on by the microbe, they're often not as inflammatory, but for many people, they still are somewhat inflammatory. So I would probably, I would do no dairy at all. Lion diet for 30, 60 or 90 days. And then you can come back into a, a full carnivore diet and see. But I, I predict after 30 to 60 days of either lion diet or carnivore diet, your seborrheic dermatitis will be at, at least 90% better. Oh, here comes my baby's home. Let me see if you guys want to say hi to Bonnie and Beckett. Let's see if they want to say hi. Yeah, come on in. I see you, Dan. I'll get you in just a second. I see you're done. No more super chats, guys. I'm about to have to go. I don't want you to waste your money. Hey, Bonnie Blue, come here. Come to me. Come say hi to everybody. Oh, you want to say hi to Becky Boo? Come sit on my knee. Yeah. These are my babies. This is Bonnie Blue. She's 15 months old. This is Beckett. Charles William Beckett. How old are you? Four. Bonnie wants to mess with my everything on my desk. That's her favorite thing in the world is to get in my drawers. So, and there's Nisha, my wife. So this is why... I eat a proper human diet because I want to be happy and healthy and play with these guys for a long damn time. I know, right? Yeah. You can't beat this. If I... You can't play with that. No, no. No, no. All right, guys, that's it. Oh, let me get Dan. Take these babies so I can answer Dan. Any ideas on why my talc allergy is much worse on carnivore than it was before? Even a simple magnesium okay. supplement okay. or almost any pill of any kind breaks me out now. Uh, Dan, what a lot of people notice is that when they're when they're eating the standard American junk diet, they were so inflamed and miserable that they could they couldn't hear their body's feedback. But now it's like your body is so pristine and so pure that it, there's definitely something. In, in the pills. And my question is, what pills are you are you trying to take? If you're taking supplements, you understand there's a 90% chance you don't need that supplement at all. It's a waste of your money. Okay, now if you're having to take some prescription medications, you can actually go to a compounding pharmacy and they can make different formulations of that medicine so that it doesn't have talc or any of the other things that you may be allergic to. Uh, Keto Chow makes a, a magnesium drop. So there's no talc or any other of the, the gelatins or cellulose or anything like that. You can get these supplements without having to take them in capsule form. But this sounds like your body is, is so pure and so clean now that, that when you do ingest something that your, your immune system doesn't like, it lets you know about it immediately. And that's, that's a good thing, even though it's a little bit annoying. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. You're welcome to share this video on your social media. If one of my answers would help a friend of yours, or if you think some of your friends on social media need to hear this, please click the share button. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up on the way out. And if you want to ask me more questions, you can join our private community for as little as five bucks a month. There's a link down in the show notes. We do four to five additional live question and answer sessions just like this inside the private group every week. Plus, we have nine coaches who also do live Q&As inside the group all the time. So you're going to get all your questions answered inside of our private community. There's a link in the show notes. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time.